Hi, my name is Kay McDonald. I'm with the Charity Charms, uh, Power of Charms podcast. And my guest today is Cindy Kenville. She's the executive director of the Sojourner Center, which is based in Phoenix, Arizona, and is one of the largest shelters to house domestic violence victims in the country. Um, Cindy, I'm so pleased to have you this month, especially because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And um, you are fairly new at the center. You started in April, I believe, which was so brave considering this is 2020 and all of the challenges that we're having. Um, so I wanted to touch base, check in and see how, how is it going in your new position there at Sojourner Center? Great, great. Well, thank you. Thanks very much for the opportunity. And yes, it's going, um, it's going well. You know, it has been a different uh, environment and a different challenge to overcome and, and understand how we keep women safe and all their children and our, our four-legged friends um, during this pandemic. But we've been very fortunate and it's going very well. Yes. You know, one, one of the things I wanted to mention that we talked about earlier in, um, in our private conversation is that some people don't realize that your, that your shelter is open. Because of COVID, a lot of people are thinking things are closed, but it's so important for people to know that you are open and there for support because you, I think you told me the police department is getting 40% more domestic violence calls at this time of year than normal. Yes. Yeah, it's been an interesting phenomenon because we are definitely seeing an increase in um, calls to our, our police departments for violence related activities, some of them and most of them being around domestic violence. And um, I always just want to make sure that women and their children know that the domestic violence shelters are here and we're open and we're still serving and I know it's a little more challenging with the pandemic because as we all know, many of us are working from home every day, including including the abuser. So the opportunity to escape is a little bit more narrow. So, but we wanna ensure that people do still know we're here and we're here to support. And, right. and, well, and the we'll service that you offer is so, so amazing. And I think Sojourner is a little bit different than other shelters because you not only allow women and children, but also their pets. Can you tell us a little bit about that program? Sure. Um, actually, about five years ago, we opened up what we call our pet companion shelter right here on campus. And the reason we really did that is we recognized that so many women are not are not going to leave their abuser because of their pets. Actually, statistically, about 45 percent of women will remain in the home if they cannot take their pet with them. So regardless if it's a kit, little kitty, it's the dog, it's the iguana, the fish, whatever that might be <laughs> to that family, we want to ensure that they can leave and bring that, um, that companion with them because they are part of the family. And frankly, a lot of the animals face the abuse just as well as, as the women and children. So um, it's, it's been a wonderful opportunity in partnership with Lost Our Home for us to uh, provide safety, a safety net for for everyone. Oh, that's such a wonderful service. I, um, I have a question for you too. Um, I, I read a statistic that Arizona ranks fourth nationally in female domestic violence, 45% higher than the national average. Do you, can you explain or do you have any idea why? Um, I, honestly, being fairly new in this, I don't. <laughs> I'm still learning a lot about what kind of makes things tick here. But, you know, Phoenix is growing exponentially. I mean, my gut would be more around the fact that our population base continues to grow and, um, you know, our climate and things that, and the way we are, and just over this, especially, uh, especially this past year, being very confined to our homes uh, is a contributor as well. But I honestly don't know why our statistics are that much higher. Mm, okay. And then right now, what is the focus of Sojourner? Are you focusing on raising funds? Are you focusing on um, volunteer support? Uh, is there any is there any new focus that you have right now that may be different from what you what you had last year at the same time? Um, no, our focus really kind of still remains on raising dollars as all good nonprofits are trying to do, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> but and, and unfortunately, this year, through some of our government uh, supported contracts, we've seen cuts, a fairly dramatic cut. So that's going to make it a little bit more challenging for us. So, you know, as the demands are rising, um, the dollars are shrinking. So it's really, really looking out to the community for that additional support and seeing how we can continue to help women thrive and work together to really impact their lives. 
you know, we are working with volunteer groups, th those that are comfortable doing any kinds of um, gatherings or events, whether it's even on our site or potentially at their own mm -hmm. place of business or whatever, you know, hygiene products, trying to get uh, mattress covers, uh, new mattress covers for us, uh, sheets, towels, you know, all of those kinds of essentials. Because remember, most of these women walk into our doors with absolutely nothing. Yeah. So we are setting them up for success and uh, you know, want to give them fresh sheets and new, you know, put mattress covers on and give them sure. clothing and, and, you know, all, all the things that we take, many of us take for granted. Yeah. And you want to give them a safe haven, a safe, clean, wonderful haven. How, how long is the average stay for a woman at Sojourner Center? Um, in our crisis shelter, women can stay with us up to 120 days. Now, I will say during this pandemic, again, we are seeing many women that are here much longer than that. Um, and that in itself is, uh, I don't want to use the word problematic in the wrong way, but it's challenging for us because after 120 days, there is no government reimbursement. Mm -hmm. But of course, we're not going to send anyone out to the streets. And really part of, the, part of their difficulty in really getting things together is the same thing that many of us are facing, right? They're trying to make sure their children are in school online. Yeah. <laughs> they're trying to figure out how they're going to go out and interview. You know, they're going to say it's, it's, um, it's multi, you know, there's no additional support services. There's no nobody else in the household to help them. It's them. So mm -hmm. how do we, how do we do all of those things? Oh my gosh. And um, so if somebody watching this right now just wants to know, how could I help Sojourner Center today? Um, what are what are some of the ways you need donations of food and or not food per se probably but clothing and pet supplies and things like that always can use those kinds of things um definitely uh the hygiene products for uh, people coming in you know the the shampoos and conditioners and mm -hmm. women's hygiene products um, we also really do appreciate getting new the, like i talked about the new twin mattress uh covers sure. because you know, when women leave. And they have to be new, in. right? Yeah. Those we really do prefer new. I mean, when somebody's going to sleep on them and right. yeah. make them to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And of course, cash is always wonderful because <laughs> you know, we, we can put it to its highest and best use and where we really need it. Um, you know, even through this time, you know, we've had to increase our ability to have more computers on site to help the kids, increase our oh. Wi-Fi capacity, of you know, course. do things that are the right thing to do, but everything comes with a cost. And so um, that's where the financial support is always very, very helpful. Well, that's a perfect segue to talk about a project that you and I are working on, um, yep. the Sojourner Center and Charity Charms. And um, it's called The Key to Strength. And it's a fundraising and awareness program because it's so important right now for the awareness so that people know that you're open, so that they know what your services are. And um, we're all being bombarded with so much social media and TV and everything that things can get lost in the shuffle. So um, uh, we put together a program that, that is helping expand the awareness. We've got newspaper going on and TV and all kinds of stuff, trying to get people to learn more about the Sojourner Center. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. It's called the Key to Strength Program. And Charity Charms provides or makes this fob that has a big um, key that says strength and then has your charm on it. And then the whole program was underwritten by Arizona Facial Plastics, a very, very generous corporate sponsor. So um, you can, for a $50 donation, you get this fabulous fob that reminds you daily of Sojourner Center. Um, you can clip it on anything. Um, we also um, will be giving these to the women that are staying there, um, thanks to the corporate support. Um, but $50, Cindy, provides one night of safety and critical care. And that's mm -hmm. so important, isn't it? Yes, yes. I mean, $50 doesn't sound like a lot, but um, because the way we set the program up, it's 100% tax deductible and 100% goes back to you because it goes through the Arizona Gives platform. So it, it's a great fundraising program. Um, we're also hoping that um, lots of companies will get on board and maybe do donations of 500 or more um, because they can use these as a way to engage their employees. The holidays are coming up. They make mm -hmm. great gifts. Um, it's kind of a new and novel thing that we've never done with, done together. It's, it's, yeah, a, it's exciting. <laughs> and a new thing for Sojourner Center. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And so we, we delivered some to you last week. Um, you did your Thrive event, which was your big yeah. virtual event. Yes. And, um, that was a big awareness event too. And are you seeing lots of people still responding after that event? We are, you know, the um, virtual event was uh, last Thursday and it was Together We Thrive. And um, truly, as as most of us are facing, it's a first <laughs> of doing anything virtual. But I, I do believe it's had an impact. We had a wonderful guest speaker, Heather Grossman, uh, paraly- wrote a, a novel, Paralyzed in Paradise. And um, her story is just oh. incredible. One of incredible resilience and, and just inspiration for all of us, frankly. Uh, a woman's been paralyzed from her neck down from her husband trying, you know, sending someone out to kill her, but he didn't succeed 23 years ago. But that woman that uh, she was a, she was, she was so inspirational. So inspirational. Oh my gosh. Thank, amazing that she's taken what happened to her in her life and she's turned it around and turned yes. it into a life of service to help other domestic violence victims. If you did not see the, the Thrive event, I'm I imagine it's up, uploaded on YouTube, but we'll, we'll send out a link as well. Yes. Um, you can also go to, for any information, sojournercenter.org. And Cindy, you have a crisis hotline number too. Can you share that with us? Yes, yes. I'm going to read it just so I make sure I get it right. Okay. But it's 602-244-0089. Excellent, excellent. Well, this is, to me, this October, I mean, we've got so much going on. Everybody is focused on all kinds of things. We've got the election coming up. It's kind of a crazy month, but, you know, people need to know that that domestic violence is a serious, serious social challenge right now. And we we thank you so much for the work that you do at Sojourner Center. Is there anything that we need to share with people before we close? No, really just thank you for your time and, and the great support that we're getting through through the keys, you know, I love the FOBs. I have my very own right here. So <laughs> they're wonderful. And, you know, really, yes. And just that awareness, you know, it is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and, and it isn't just about women. Women and men both are impacted That's by domestic true. violence. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we think of women often, it's probably one in four of us that, that will have dealt with the domestic violence at some time in our lifetime, but it's about one in seven men that also deal with uh, domestic violence. So. We love to make sure that that's out there. So although we can't shelter men here, we do have a very strong outreach program that we can work with men that are also looking for um, safety planning and opportunities to, and how they can escape the violence. So we're we here are, to support everyone. That is, and thank you, Cindy. That's a very interesting statistic. And I don't think that one that most people have heard that one in seven men, um, also one in four women. I mean, to me, that's unacceptable. And if you look around, if you go to a party and you have 12 gals sitting there, you look around and you're like, oh my gosh, I think who's been affected here. And people don't talk about it either. So one of the things that uh, Sojourner Center has, and I, I don't I have one handy right here. Um, you have a wonderful little fold out card that, that you put in all different kinds of locations for people that has mm-hmm. all of your information, uh, helpline crisis, what you can do, how if you, you can identify if you're a victim. So um, where can people get those also if they if they go online and ask for it? Yeah, we call them our shoe cards because really shoe they're, cards, they're yeah. designed to kind of fit in your shoe. Mm-hmm. And we see them a lot of, um, you know, we really work a lot with the healthcare providers or different pharmacies or whoever will allow us to put them up. So uh, people have the opportunity to take that card and put it in. But if anyone is looking for the, that kind of information or would like a supply of them, please, if you go out to our website, you'll see um, you'll see my email out there and you're welcome to email me and I'll get something out to you. Yeah, because I would think that would be a wonderful thing to have at um, locations, um, women's businesses, um, yes. women's restrooms, <laughs> anywhere. Right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, Cindy, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, my uh, pleasure. We are really enjoying working with you and your team to spread spread awareness and raise funds this month. Um, and again, Sojourner Center, um, sojournercenter.org. Yes. 